Hi, I'm Shane with H2O Leader. Today I will be demonstrating our new mini micro wash tank and valve kit assembly. There'll be roughly six steps to this process and I will be taking you all through six steps. Step one, gather your materials. Um, what I have here is my tools, basic tools that I'll need. Uh, I have a torch, a ratchet, seven eighths, tubing cutter, pipe wrench, thread tape, some food grade silicone, and a 5 16th nut runner, and also some clear food grade grease. So when you open your box, you're gonna to wanna to make sure the wash tank is there, the valve kit assembly is there, you should have 12 feet of blue hose, 12 feet of red hose, and 12 feet of braided line. Also, there will be a V6 valve. This should be in there. Along with your half inch quick coupler insert. Along with four stainless steel band clamps. Along with a 3 8 half inch push to connect fitting. There should be Two of those, that'll be loose in the box. The valve kit will already be assembled for you. Everything will be there. Everything will be threaded in. Everything should be good with that. The same with the wash tank. It's already gonna have its three-way valve on it. You shouldn't have to do any of that work. The only thing you're gonna have to do is cut the hoses and fit them to the machine and your placement. So step two, determine your placement. Everybody's placement is probably gonna be different. What you want to do is you have your RO already, is you want to try to keep it as close to your RO as you can. Like you can see here how we have it fairly close. That will cut down on the length, the amount of hose that you need. Um, and it will just keep everything a little bit cleaner. But in the case that maybe your RO is somewhere else in your tank and your wash valve needs to be somewhere else a ways away, you may just have to buy a little bit more hose to accommodate that situation. Step three, mount your wash tank and your valve kit. You're gonna to have to mount it to something. Uh, this case here, we have a board where we mounted ours. You're probably gonna mount yours to a wall. You could make up a fixture of your own. Uh, we just used a couple lag bolts and also a couple construction bolt, uh, screws. And that seemed to work in this application. It'll work in most any application. Step four, plumbing. So as you can see, we've done most of our plumbing here already. When you get it, obviously the hoses are not gonna be pushed in here. You're gonna to have to cut those to fit your application. We've already pre-cut everything for this application, but I will show you how I like to uh, install my fittings. I like to use a little bit of food grade silicone. You don't need a lot, just a little. And you're just gonna take that and gently go around. That's just gonna create an extra, extra protection against any leak, seal stuff up really good. Now you can use a set of channel locks. You can use your pipe wrench. I've got a 7 8 inch drive. It actually works really well. Do the same thing on the next one. Now that we've got that done, we're gonna move on to our V6 valve. So your V6 valve is gonna look just like this. It's gonna come in the box just like this. The first thing we're gonna do a little bit more food grade silicone. We're gonna screw that into the feed pump. Usually hand tight on those is fine. Next step, V6 valve. We're gonna put that on there. Snug that up. Now, in order to put these half inch hoses, I like to use a little food grade grease. They go on pretty mean without the grease. We're just gonna put a little bit around the barb. That's about all you need. Now a torch, or you can use a heat gun. Most people have a torch. And we're just gonna gently heat this hose up. Nice back and forth motion, turning the hose.
And you just, once it gets nice and squishy, you know it's gonna go right on there. Just like that. Same thing with the hose coming from your wash tank. Now you're gonna take your two band clamps. So we just finished that. Now we have to attach our blue hose, which is our permeate line. Your blue stickers, blue to blue. It's pretty simple. Push that in, you'll feel it slide down in there. Same with the red. That's our concentrate line. Red, red, just push that down in there and you'll feel it drop right down in there. And, that, and that's it, those are locked in and they're ready to go. And the reason we have these here and the reason we have the banjo fitting here is so at night, if you don't have it in a heated room, it's easy. You just unclamp this, pull that off. You push down on this, pull that out. Same with the blue. You can take this machine inside now and it'll be protected from the elements in case you're not gonna make syrup for a while. It's gonna be real cold for a while. So that's a, that's a great feature with this machine. That's the mobility of it. So another thing I wanna add is on your V4 valve, you're gonna to wanna to cut your hose to fit towards your wherever your tank may be. Our tank is obviously here. That's what we're using to demonstrate today. So from your V4 valve to your concentrate tank, and then from your V3 valve, you're gonna to wanna to do the same thing. Same thing. You're gonna to wanna to send that to your permeate tank. You're gonna use that to clean your machine, to rinse the machine is what you're gonna do on that. And that's it, that's it for plumbing. So step five, we're just gonna recheck all fittings and clamps. Basically give them a quick look over. Everything seems to look good to me. Step six, testing. So in testing, I'm gonna take you through three steps. A rinse, a concentrate, and a wash. We're gonna start with the rinse. So rinse, we just wanna make sure that we have our permeate coming to our machine. In this case, we're using one tank. Normally I'd have it set up on two tanks of permeate and a sap. So we're gonna look up here at the V6 valve, make sure our arrows are aligned. Arrow is going into the feed pump, arrow is going to the tank. And then we're gonna look up at our V4 valve. We're gonna have to switch that valve because we want that arrow coming from the machine into the three-way valve system. Same with the V3 valve, from the machine into the three-way valve system. Then the V18 valve, we wanna make sure that that is coming from the three-way valve system to the drain. And you can see the arrows, and this will go right down the drain. So now we're gonna turn the machine on. Simply by turning it to on and holding in the start switch. You will hear the pressure switch engage, and then you can release the switch. So once we're in rinse, we just wanna make sure that this is all the way open so we're getting as much flow out of there as we possibly can. Now that's rinse mode. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into a concentrate mode. We're gonna shut the machine down. V6 valve is gonna stay right where it is. The only thing you would do differently is if you had a system set up like this, you would turn your valve on from your our SAP tank. We're gonna come up here to the three-way valve system. Three-way valve system, we are gonna turn V4, and we are gonna turn V3. Now that's gonna direct flow from your machine to your concentrate tank, which we're using a five gallon pail for, just for demonstration purposes, and from your permeate meter to your permeate tank. Arrows as follows. So now we're in a concentrate mode. We are gonna start the machine. Again, on and hold until you hear the pressure switch engage. Now what we wanna do is adjust our V2. And we're gonna crank that right down because we wanna build some concentrate. We're gonna go right down to 0.2 gallons a minute. That should give us about 6% or so with one pass with 2% going in. You can see the liquid coming out. That's what you're gonna boil. 
That's what you're gonna throw away or use to clean your evaporator or your RO. Normally you'd be boiling all that. That's the nice thing about an RO. It takes a lot of the work out of it for you. So the next thing we're gonna do is a rinse after the concentrate mode and then we're gonna go into a wash mode. We already sold you the rinse mode, so we're just gonna go right into the wash mode to demonstrate that. So what I like to use is a stock pot. Most people have a canning tank. You'll heat that canning tank up to about 120 degrees of water. Then we'll fill our stock pot. Just about half full is all we really need. A couple gallons, that's all you need. Be careful when you put this in there because it is hot. And the reason I do 120 degrees because you've got cold liquid in this machine, so it's gonna cool that liquid down. So now what we wanna do, make sure that our valve is in the right position, which it is. That arrow comes out of the wash tank, back to the machine. V6 is not, so we gotta turn that valve. Now you can see the arrow going into the feed pump, back to the wash tank. Also, we want to make sure that these valves are in the right position, which they are not. So we're going to turn those. Now we're in wash mode. With, we actually have to turn V18 because we want that all that liquid coming into this valve and headed back to the wash tank and then back through the feed pump. And that's just going to cause recirculation, really. Now we'll turn this on. Pressure's up. We want to make sure that this V2 valve is all the way open. And now what it's doing is just recirculating the water from the wash tank through the machine. And at this point, you could add any of your chemicals, your acid or your soap. Very little soap on this machine. You don't need a lot. Probably a tablespoon at the most is all you're going to need. And we'll let that run for about 30 minutes. And then we'll go right back to a rinse mode and then you're ready to concentrate again. And that's it. So now that we've taken you through all the steps, we're just gonna list them off. Step one is the gathering materials. Step two is determine your placement. Step three is to mount your wash tank and your valve kit. Step four is plumbing. Step five, recheck all your fittings and your clamps. Step six, test your machine. And should you have any questions about any of this at all, just contact your local H2O leader dealer and they will help you out.